sugar. It's widely available, cheap, and many find it irresistible. Over the last decade, the world has consumed sugary food at a staggering rate, far exceeding the guidelines from the World Health Organization. The health implications are clear. Excess sugar consumption contributes to obesity and type 2 diabetes. In adolescence, metabolic syndrome is specifically predicted by added sugar consumption unrelated to calories and unrelated to obesity. So why do we consume so much sugar? And how do we avoid it completely? To understand sugar, we need to delve into the molecular level. Table sugar is a disaccharide consisting of one glucose molecule and one fructose molecule. That's 50% glucose and 50% fructose. Sugar is a naturally occurring carbohydrate, but in recent decades, it has been crucial to processed foods like breakfast cereals, canned foods, and sweetened beverages. In fact, as much as 74% of the packaged foods available are loaded with added sugar. It's all around us. It's not really sugar per se, it's processed food that's the problem. But since sugar is the marker for processed food, and since we have the causative data for sugar and disease, it's the obvious first target. In the sugar molecule, the fructose part may be the worst for our health. Excess amounts place a burden on your liver, which could lead to a series of metabolic complications. If we look back in history, the level of obesity in America began to climb around the same time the food industry started using lots of high fructose corn syrup. Because high fructose corn syrup is cheap and readily available, it's everywhere in packaged foods. The food industry know that most people buy foods on the way they're promoted, not the nutritional content. And often a lot of these foods that are marketed as healthy and low fat are loaded with sugar. So what can we do to start reducing sugar in our lives? One approach is to increase our awareness of the problem. For instance, industrialized food manufacturers have contributed dramatically to our sugar problem. Sugar is potentially addictive, so you end up consuming more and more of it, which makes food manufacturers more and more money. This corporate strategy has been around for a long time. All calories count, no matter where they come from, including Coca-Cola and everything else with calories. And if you eat and drink more calories than you burn off, you'll gain weight. If we follow this calories in, calories out analogy, we find out that it actually takes a full hour of intensive hiking to burn off a double cheeseburger. It takes an hour of running to burn off fast food fried chicken with soda. And it takes an hour of downhill skiing to burn off a single slice of pepperoni pizza. A calorie is not a calorie. All calories are not metabolized in the same way. And because of this, it's extremely misleading to state that a calorie of sugar, a calorie of meat, and a calorie of olive oil are all received in the same way by our body's amazingly complex system. In fact, added sugar has absolutely no nutritional value whatsoever. And contrary to what the food manufacturers want you to believe, you actually do not need any carbohydrates from sugar for energy at all. There's actually no biological requirement for it. And overconsuming sugars often will lead to severe health complications. One very good study that came out of Stanford University uh, involving 175 countries looking at sugar availability and consumption worldwide. And what they found in that study, and this is Sanjay Basu and Robert Lustig, is that for every um, 150 calories of excess sugar one consumed over their quota for the day, compared to 150 calories from another source, such as fat or protein, there was an 11-fold increase in the prevalence of type 2 diabetes. So it's clear there's a problem, but what can be done to fix the system? The change in the food environment caused the change in our biochemistry, which therefore caused changes in our behavior. We can't fix the behaviors until we fix the food environment, because that's the source of the problem. We asked Dr. Brett Schur, the medical director at dietdoctor.com, about how we deal with this excess sugar consumption. Reducing access to sugar-sweetened beverages could be one of the best interventions and most effective interventions we have. There was a study out of UC San Francisco where all they did was restrict the access to sugar-sweetened beverages at work. After only 10 months, they found that sugar-sweetened beverage consumption was cut almost in half, and they improved markers of metabolic health. 
A comprehensive set of policies is necessary to reduce sugar consumption. According to Robert Lustig, there are a few key elements to help us combat the sugar intake in the general public. Number one is knowledge, making ourselves educated on the issue. Being aware of the idea that sugar is a potentially addictive substance, and once we start eating it, it's difficult to stop. And also being aware of any sugar content in products, which is ubiquitous. The next one is access. Having an access to a choice. Sugar reduction is likely to be impossible if all the food around you is tainted and you don't have access to healthy food. So we need to decrease access to sugary foods as in the UCSF study and increase access to healthier options. And last, affordability. We need policies in place that make healthier whole food options more affordable and sugar-sweetened, less healthy options less affordable. Only then can we begin to factor the healthcare cost of food into the purchase price. This is a population-based problem. We have a major crisis, but that major crisis requires a major intervention. The good news is that you can stop this sugar problem, starting with yourself and your habits. A recent report from Norway showed that with some taxation and with strong public health initiatives, they were able to reduce sugar consumption across the entire country by about 40%. That shows how when a country is committed to reducing sugar consumption and improving the health of their citizens, it's something that can be achieved. By informing people about food and nutrition through public awareness and other resources, we can stop excess sugar consumption and win this battle together. For a bunch more resources about nutrition and health, visit our website, dietdoctor.com. We also have a sugar addiction course by Bitten Johnson, available as a premium feature. Sign up for a 30-day free trial and you can watch them instantly, along with 500 plus videos on our site. Check it out.